Hello, I'm John Bowen and this is a brief summary of an approach to spray marking in cats. We're going to look at um, general points in investigating spray marking problems and then a summary of the kind of treatments that are available. So the first thing is how do we investigate these problems? And initially we need to rule out a number of underlying medical factors that could be important in this case. So low urinary tract disease, um, pain, endocrine disease, particularly thyroid dysfunction, um, sensory or cognitive impairment. Any of these are problems that can alter motivation in cats, increase competition for resources or increase stress. And particularly these are things that are relevant in multi-cat households where they're likely to lead to increased conflict between the resident cats. Then once we've ruled out those problems, we need to think about the specific situation and we need to look at the pattern of spray marking, the relationship between the cats, the kind of environment the cats are living in, the resources that are available to them, and then the security of the home environment. And what we usually do is we get the owner to start by drawing us a map of the environment that's available to the cats. And this is a kind of room plan which has all of the main rooms of the house and the furniture um, just essentially um, uh, planned out. And then the key resources like food and water and latrine sites where they're located. And then we ask the owner to um, record on that diagram all of the locations where they found urine. And we don't necessarily ask them to make a differentiation between spray marks and um, urine house soiling. We're just interested in whether urine has been found because there can be situations in which um, what appears to be a spray mark is in fact urination. And we ask them also to include additional information on the frequency of deposits. And in this diagram, we've chosen the convention of having um, one X meaning infrequent and three X's meaning very frequent. So that might be daily versus um, several times a day. And it's also very important to have information about the progression of how the cat has been spray marking. So again, in this convention, we have one indicating locations where um, the owner first started to find regular um, deposits of urine and then two and three indicating places that were then found to be locations where urine was deposited. So we're trying to look at the pattern of how the problem developed over time as well as what it's like now. And this diagram helps us in terms of understanding the pattern of the behaviour and also gives the um, information we need when we're preparing the owner to start cleaning the house. So it's a really good baseline piece of information that helps us to then look at how the problem is responding to treatment and how to go through the treatment program. And we look for certain common patterns of um, spray marking. So this is one of the typical patterns where all of the spray marks are located around boundaries, particularly external doors, windows or furniture and curtains that are close to those um, windows and doors. So you can see in this diagram that there's some spray marking going on around um, the dining room, particularly on um, the area around the windows, but also on the furniture which is close to that window. And this kind of pattern indicates that there is an external threat that's perceived by the cats. Now those external cats may not be ever entering the home, they're simply lurking around in the peripheral territory of the resident cat. And the resident cat is trying to find a way to share space with those other cats without getting into um, direct physical conflict with them. And the best way for the cat to do that is to retreat further into its own territory inside the house and to use spray marks as a way of time sharing. Now, the obvi obviously, the problem is that from the external cat's point of view, those spray marks are inside and that cat can't detect them. So these, these spray marks don't work, but that's what the um, um, purpose of them is from the point of view of the resident cat. Another common pattern is to see all of the spray marks located around internal boundaries. So this would be internal doors, corridors, around the bottom and top of staircases, and also on furniture, which is near to those kind of entry exit points from um, rooms and around the house. This tends to indicate that the conflict is going on between resident cats. So resident cats are trying to timeshare space within this central um, territory between themselves and the other cats that are in the household. 
and this is an indication that somehow there isn't social cohesion with, within the, the group of cats that are living in the house and therefore the cats are trying to timeshare space as if they were unfamiliar with each other. Now obviously we don't see these two pure patterns of all internal and all external um, uh, um, spray marking um, in cats. Quite often we see a combination of those two things because there are internal threats and also external threats because of a large level of um, overpopulation in an area. But those are the common patterns that you will see and it enables you to understand um, where, the, where the tensions might be arising from. There is a third common pattern which is where we see spray marks beginning around an entry point like a cat door and then spreading rapidly into the house. So with it, over the period of maybe even just a, a, a couple of weeks, finding that there are more and more spray marks going on around doors leading from the living room um, to the cat door and around the kitchen in this location that we can see on the on the diagram and that's an indication of a potential home invasion so a neighborhood cat has tried to get into the house to get food and water and the resident cat is attempting to timeshare that location in order to avoid direct conflict and in those cases that that spray marking may well have some effect it may even be that the invading cat is also leaving um, spray marks so it may not just be the resident cat that's spray marking we have lots of evidence that intruding cats will also spray mark and that the two cats are trying to come to some kind of compromise um, but in the end it's extremely stressful for the resident cat so this isn't something that's in any way desirable obviously for the owner or for the resident cat and the next thing we want to do if, if we're dealing with a multi-cat household is to get information about the social relationships between the resident cats to find out whether there is social cohesion within the total population of cats in the household. And what we usually do is get owners to help us complete this diagram. So we write down all of the names of the cats in a circle and then we join those cats using um, coloured arrows to indicate grooming and rubbing behaviours and aggressive behaviours. And you can see in this um, diagram that certain cats like Tilly show no aggression to other cats at all, but they show affiliative behaviour to two other cats. So Samson, Tilly and Tubbs all show grooming and rubbing behaviour between them. And Fred and Tansy show grooming ru and rubbing be behaviour between them. But there is some sign of aggression between Samson and Tubbs and the other two cats. So in this state, we would say that in fact there are two hostile factions that are sharing the home. And what we've got to do is find ways of enabling that group to live with less pressure and therefore more likelihood that they can begin to reform some kind of social cohesion between all of the members of that group. So this is a very simple way of understanding what the social relationships are. So once we have that, we have information about where um, spray marking is happening. We have information about the social relationships between the cats. We can get information about where those factions spend time in the household and therefore allocate resources to those cats so that there's less likelihood of them being um, in conflict with each other. So the next thing to do is look at the um, distribution of resources. So the number and location of litter trays, food, water, food and water bowls and resting and hiding locations. Now typically cats um, uh, um, use separate sites for urine and defecation and they prefer to have their own latrine locations. So if we have one litter tray in a multi-cat household and one or two food bowls and water bowls in a multi-cat household it's quite likely that that's going to lead to conflict over those resources because cats need to have um, access to those um, resources on an ad-lib basis. Then we need to look at whether the home is secured against intruding cats, whether there's an electronic um, cat flap or not, and whether that cat flap is creating effectively a window for other cats to look into the home at cat level and to be able to spy on the activities that are going on and threaten um, the resident cats. Then we need to look at what can be done, and I'm only going to summarise these very um, generally so that you can then look for further information on the Wikivet pages. Um, the first thing to look at is um, environmental enrichment. So what we're dealing with here are activity feeders that give the cats free access to food 
on a slightly restricted basis so the cats have to work for the food so it, it prevents cats from gorging all of the food in one go helps to drive them into a more normal pattern of eating 10 or 20 small meals per day and because those activity feeders require a certain amount of mental energy they're more stimulating for the cats and we also need to increase the number of resting climbing and hiding opportunities so that cats can stay away from each other within the house and maintain a level of independence from each other and the idea effectively is to enable each cat to operate as an individual without competition um, for those resources with other cats and therefore reduce tension between the cats that are living in the household. Now if we're dealing with several factions in a home we might well have an environmental enrichment program for each faction so each group might have its own resting places, its own feeding and its own water locations. Next thing to think about is a particular problem of latrine access. Um, one of the formulae for providing latrines for cats is to say that you should have one litter tray per cat plus one. So effectively in a four um, cat household that means five litter trays. Now clearly for many owners that really isn't something that they can tolerate. It's, it's, it would be um, very difficult to live with. So one of the ways of dealing with it is to provide outdoor latrines. Now we've already said that for many cats there is no outdoor latrine in their own garden so they're forced to go to other cats gardens to find them and not having their own latrines means that they they have to go to other cats gardens and it also means that they don't it's less easy for them to maintain uh, a small territorial boundary that's related to their own um, garden size so what we can do is install outdoor toilets and all this is you can see in the picture on the left it's not very easy to to identify what's there but effectively there's a um, a cat litter tray sized hole that's been dug um, about 30 centimeters deep and then soft playground sand that you would use for um, a children's um, play area poured into that hole and a little bit of earth scuffed over the top now the idea of that is that um, it's a very attractive um, toilet site for the cat. It's in a nice quiet border at the edge of the garden where the cat feels safe. Because it's sandy that latrine won't freeze over when it's cold. It will always be easy to dig and it won't get waterlogged because it's free draining. So this means that this is a, a permanently accessible toilet and what we'd ideally do is put several of those in the garden in order to reduce the needs to have multiple litter trays in the house. It is important to increase security for cats. On the one hand, if we have um, evidence of home invasion, then having an electronic cat door is definitely a good idea. In general, I would advise that, that all cat owners use those kind of secure cat doors because it minimizes the chances of home invasion starting. One of the problems is that if cats are hungry and persistent and they find an opportunity to get into a, a household, bully the cat that lives there and steal the food it's very very difficult to discourage them so it's much better to prevent that situation starting um, the other thing we often do is get people to paint the cat door opaque and there are two reasons for this one is that it prevents neighborhood cats looking in through the cat door to see where food is and to effectively gather information about what's going on in the household but it also means that the resident cat isn't being faced with other cats staring at it through um, its own doorway, which can be very stressful for them. The other thing we tend to do uh, in houses is to try to block views. So if we look at this right hand image, this is um, a view of a, um, a front garden where there is a wall that other cats routinely sit on to stare into the resident cat's household and the resident cat was um, spray marking around the curtains on either side of this window. So clearly the way of dealing with this is to block that view by putting up um, um, a small amount of um, film on the window so that the cat inside doesn't feel threatened by cats outside and therefore it minimizes the chances of spraying happening. The other thing we have to deal with is removing spray marks and there is much more information on that on the Wikibet pages, how to go about cleaning and removing um, the, the spray scent marks. But once they're removed they have to be replaced with something else and normally within the core territory cats would use facial and flank marks to indicate that this is a safe area and we can um, take advantage of this by providing high levels of synthetic equivalent pheromone marks in the form of products like Feliway. 
and the idea is to remove these spray scent marks which indicate that the area is shared or that there is some conflict over that area and um, switch them with synthetic high intensity equivalents of facial marks which therefore make the home feel like core territory and decrease the probability of um, spray marking and there's lots of evidence that this kind of approach is very effective in cats so it's one of the mainstays of treating um, uh, spray marking problems in cats. If problems have been going on for a long period let's say a cat has been spray marking for six months or more or where we have several cats in a household spray marking or where we have multiple sites being spray marked on a daily basis so it's very difficult for the owner to keep up and keep the areas clean then we might consider using medication like um, clomipramine or fluoxetine. Now neither of these are licensed for use in cats but they're generally widely used for um, indoor spray marking problems in cats. Very effective, we usually see results within a, a period of a few weeks and typically we treat these cats until we see a period of at least six to eight weeks without any spray marking and then we withdraw the product. And typically we withdraw these products and then we rely on the use of um, the environmental enrichment and the pheromone products which we then gradually withdraw over time leaving the cat with an improved environment so we leave the environmental enrichments in place. So um, we shouldn't think of these as being a, a last option. These are very effective medications that can be used and it's often better to treat early on in a problem um, and to um, deal with it quickly rather than allow the owner to reach the point where they become um, very distressed and maybe even consider rehoming or euthanizing the cat. But typically we end up using these drugs in, in more long-standing and complex problems. So I hope you found some of that useful. All of the information that we've um, covered is also included in the Wikivet pages. And if you'd like to go to um, the Wikivet pages on cat behaviour, you'll find much more information available on normal cat behaviour, as well as a wide range of behaviour problems and treatments for those um, behaviour problems. And we're constantly updating those pages, so it's good to come back to them on a regular basis to find out whether we've added new information um, on um, new treatments or more um, sophisticated information on the treatments that are already available. So hopefully you found this interesting. Um, thank you very much for listening.